If you're anything like me, and I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you definitely are. If you like playing guitar, if you like recording your own riffs, if you want it to sound good out of the box, but you don't want to spend all the time actually mixing it because it does take a lot of time to make things sound really, really good and professional, especially when you have all these videos and all these tools available today where everything is sounding super, super schmick. This especially rings true for me because as a YouTuber, when companies are hitting you up and they want you to make videos, you need to have things ready super, super quickly and have them sounding just as good as pretty much anything else out there. And that's really, really hard when you don't have a lot of time to make things sound super, super professional. So when SDL Tones hit me up asking to do a video on their Control Hub plugin, I was actually really excited because I really wanted to see if this could kind of fix all of that and if I could get a really nice, clean cut, polished sound out of doing literally nothing. So much so that SDL Tones were actually confident enough in letting me do a video where I could mix an entire song using just the one plugin. Now, even for me, that seemed like a bit of a stretch, but you know, as I did it, I kind of realized that it was very, very easy to do that, like almost too easy. So this is what a demo song sounds like mixed by SCL Control Hub on literally everything. SDL Control Hub is a little bit different than your standard channel strip plugin. Even though it looks like a channel strip, it's actually modeled after Studio Console Gear. Um, so for example, things like Master EQ Compression, they're actually modeled after the physical units that certain producers have in their studios. And that's where you can get these producer packs, such as the Will Putney pack, which is some of the ones that I've used in this video here. Basically, it's taking a live snapshot of whatever gear that they've got, whatever gear that they run through for that particular purpose, whether it be compression, Master EQ, pre-EQ, stuff like that. So you can get a live modeled snapshot, just like you would with guitar app modeling software like the Amp Hub or um, the Tone Hub and stuff like that, but just put into actual mixing gear, which is really, really cool. So let's jump into the demo song session where you can see how I literally just use the one plugin to mix everything. So here's a session for the demo song. As you can see, we're using Reaper. I usually use FL Studio, but I figured Reaper would be a cool one for this one. And the only plugin that I'm using across all these inserts, whether it be kick, snare, toms, um, whoops, toms, rooms, overheads, bass, rhythm guitar, whatever, even parallel compression and drum reverb, everything is STL Control Hub. The only plugin that's not STL Control Hub, Control Hub, is Rear Stream, and all that's doing is streaming the audio from the door into OBS so that I can make this video for you right now. And this is what the Control Hub plugin looks like. So as you can see, it's kind of like a channel strip, although it's a little bit more than that. So we've got like pre-EQ, color, compression, master EQ, effects, a bunch of different effects I might add and a limiter. For example, for the kick drum, I've just gone and picked kick British console color um, and I've kind of tweaked the compression threshold and stuff to kind of match what I'm going for. But apart from that, everything is pretty much standard. So as you can see, if I solo out the kick drum, I'm aiming to get around like a negative three, negative four dB of gain reduction on my compression. That's pretty much the only thing I've changed. I've only changed the threshold value and the attack and release and stuff like that. Everything else is pretty much set standard. If I turn this off, you can see how it kind of affects the kick drum sound. So you can obviously tell that it sounds much more raw, much more unmixed, unprocessed when it's off. As soon as you turn it on, it sounds way more polished and just generally nicer to the ear. And it's the same kind of principle across the snare. I didn't even put anything on the toms really. I figured that they didn't need that much. Um, but things like overheads, rooms, bass, rhythm guitars, layer guitars, and then even stuff like the parallel compression. So I'm just slamming compression and color um, for the parallel comp and then things like reverb. It's literally everything disengaged apart from the reverb and the master EQ. Going into the master bus, you can see I've got two instances of control. So the first one is kind of like your mix bus. Um, so it'd be this one right here. Basically, it's just kind of, you know, the general compression, general like top end mixing approach using the SDL Tones control hub. I'm aiming for like a negative three dB of compression um, just on snare hits and stuff like that. You see it kick in when there's a snare hit. <laughs> And then 
you probably saw the other one already straight after that one is the master bus one so basically just mimicking what you'd get out of doing a typical master bus setting and just by picking a preset i've picked what master rock this is a rock track so i've picked master rock and to my ears it sounds really really good if i turn the limiter off um you hear what it was like before it kind of you know adds all that extra volume and i can kind of bypass the plugin on and off so you can hear the changes that it's making as a master bus So you can probably tell it's adding a little bit of an extra polish, kind of bringing the instruments forward a bit, adding a little bit more excitement to the whole mix. And then of course, when you turn the limiter on, it's gonna be much louder. Even with stuff like rhythm guitars, as you can see, a little bit of pre-EQ happening, nothing too drastic. Um, API console color, some compression, very, very light compression on my add. Master EQ, which is probably the most important thing for mixing guitars in this instance anyway. Um, and that's it. And as you can tell, when I turn it on and off, you'll hear the difference straight away. So when it's on, it sounds much, much warmer. Um, you can probably tell if I solo it out. So if you just hear the guitars by themselves and I turn it on and off, you can definitely hear how the guitars get just more compressed, more warmer. It fits the mix better um, and generally just sounds more pleasing to the ear. So you can probably tell it takes out some of those harsh frequencies, warms it up a little bit, makes it sound a little bit more squishy, which I think in this context for this type of song and this type of mix works really, really well. The guitars aren't meant to be the forefront, like the typical modern metal stuff you usually see from me. Um, for this track anyway, you know, having it kind of like a rock vibe and making all the instruments kind of flow as one um, and having room for vocal and stuff, I think it fits this mix really, really, really well. And that again is literally just from clicking um, guitar electric rhythm, just the preset and tweaking a few values here and there. I really haven't done much at all. Even going to things like just reverb. So this is literally just the drum reverb bus. So if I solo this out, all you'll hear is a send being sent from each thing individually and just a bunch of reverb on top of it. Um, the mix is at 100% because I just want the reverb and I'm writing that fader um, in conjunction with the raw drums and the parallel comm, which all then gets fed into um, the drum bus here. So I can control the overall volume of all of these faders at once. So if I turn that reverb off and that master EQ off, it's just gonna sound like a drum send. So what I'll do now is I'll disengage everything. So I'm gonna turn all the STL Control Hub instances off apart from the master because I want the level to be matched. Um, I want you to hear the kind of difference it makes to the overall mix, not so much how loud or quiet it gets, because if I do turn this master bus off, it'll be way quieter and you won't get a good perception of how it's actually affecting the mix. So keeping in mind that the only thing that's really changing um, is the mix bus and all the individual inserts, master bus is staying the same. Um, and that's just to kind of, you know, make sure it's even across the board. So what I'll do is I'll turn this off just by doing this, which is very handy to do in Reaper, which FL had something like that. And now I'm just going to play everything and kind of turn everything on at once and then I'll turn the mix bus on as well so you can really hear it. So starting from the start.
So you can probably tell that when SDL Control Hub is on across all instances, the mix generally just sounds much more warmer, much more glued. Generally sounds like a more cohesive piece of music. When everything is off, it sounds like a raw mix. It sounds like, you know, everything is kind of here and there. Everything's kind of fighting for space on top of each other. Um, there's some whistly frequencies poking out and stuff like that. But generally when all the instances of SDL control are turned on, the mix generally just sounds much nicer. I really want to reiterate the fact that this was very easy to mix for me because again, all I would do is just load it up, hit a preset. And as you can see here, I would just change the values of the compression. If I loaded up this preset as it was, um, the compression wouldn't be reacting the way I wanted to because obviously every snare, every way it's recorded is a little bit different. So I'm just adjusting it to the way and the volume and the gain of this snare. Naturally, I always try to aim around like a negative seven to around negative 10 of gain reduction on the harder hits. And as you can see, I've kind of dialed it in to do just that. So there you have it, SDL Control Hub. What do you guys think? Do you think you guys will be checking this out in the future? Definitely let me know in the comments below. Again, massive thank you to SDL Tones for letting me try out this plugin. I definitely am gonna be using it in the future because it makes my life so much easier. It kind of just feels like cheating. If you guys like this video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you saw or heard. And if you wanna see more of this stuff, definitely think about subscribing. If you wanna support me personally, you can check out the tabs, stems, DIs, all that good stuff for the demo song you heard in the video on my Patreon. You can also check out my affiliate links, my Instagram, my Spotify, all the links for that stuff will be down in the description below. Thank you so much. I appreciate all your support. Massive thank you to all my Patreons and massive thank you to all you guys for watching. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for sticking by. Ciao.